Hi, Medical Wildcats. I'm Joseph Guggen. I'm, I'm a 1972 alum of the medical school. And this month's presentation is on our sister institution, the dental school, which was in existence for 110 years until it closed down in 2001. I like to show this picture of the ward building, which was shared by both the dental school and the medical school. You can see on the right, Lurie Children's Hospital. So this picture was obviously taken after 2012 when the Children's Hospital was built and after the uh, dental school had closed down. But I think it's a beautiful picture of the ward building, which was shared by both the medical school and the dental school for many years. Let's take a trip back to the 19th century. In the 19th century, there was quackery in both medicine and dentistry due to the lack of adequately trained physicians and dentists. Many physicians thought that dentistry should be a subspecialty of medicine. And the early dentist training consisted of either an apprenticeship where they learned by observation and performing medial tasks or a preceptorship under a dental practitioner. On the right, you see an ad in the Chicago Democrat, Chicago's first newspaper advertising for Dr. Kennecott who uh, performed surgery with as little pain as possible and had moderate charges. His office was in a tavern. Dentistry at that time was perceived as a mechanical activity, and it was thought that a strong grip and a good assistant uh, were all that was necessary uh, for the uh, dentistry. The dentistry was the domain of physicians, but also blacksmiths, barbers, and other artisans. Only the wealthy could afford prostheses for missing teeth. There were several attempts to regulate dentistry. In the late 19th century, only 20% of the practicing dentists in Chicago uh, were dental school graduates or physicians. And the remainder were products of uh, apprenticeships, preceptorships, uh, fraudulent diploma mills, uh, or quackery. Europeans uh, came to the United States to get degrees at these uh, diploma mills uh, and then uh, returned to their country with a dental degree. Germany, in particular, uh, clamped down on the uh, uh, recipients of uh, Chicago dental degrees. In 1871, a bill was introduced in the Illinois legislature to regulate dentistry, uh, but it was actually defeated. And the possession of an MD degree allowed physicians to practice dentistry. The five-member state board of examiners uh, uh, had to determine the fitness of dentists. And dentists were allowed to practice if they were already uh, in practice, but they had to register with the board. Finally, in 1881, uh, the state passed a bill uh, declaring the, necess the necessity of a diploma from a recognized uh, uh, dental college in the uh, Illinois or some other state. The first dental college in Chicago was Chicago Dental Infirmary, uh, which opened in 1883 as a private for profit school. The name was changed to Chicago College of Dental Surgery in 1884. And you can see the, that name of the school on above the arch in this heavily pixelated pictures. It only admitted candidates who already had an MD degree. This requirement was later dropped. In the late 19th century, uh, Northwestern University President Henry Wade Rogers wanted to affiliate professional schools with the university, including pharmacy, law, dentistry, and medicine. Unlike the medical school, uh, which was created de novo by uh, several dis uh, disgruntled physicians from uh, Rush Medical School, the dental school was created by the sequential union of three pre-existing dental schools. University Dental College, which did not have any affiliation with any university, American College of Dental Surgery, and Northwestern College of Dental Surgery, which had no affiliation at the time with Northwestern University. The first school to unite uh, was United, was a University Dental College founded in 1887 as a for-profit school. It was reorganized in 1891 with a loose affiliation with Northwestern University. Most dental schools at that time were two-year programs, but this school had a three-year program uh, that, which depressed enrollment in 1891, they only had 19 students. So the student had to close due to lack of uh, funds and declining enrollment. It was reorganized under the name Northwestern University Dental School and was located at South State and East 22nd Street and then moved near Chicago Medical College 
the predecessor of the, the medical school at Dearborn and 24th. American College of Dental Surgery was another school which uh, was uh, joined with uh, the other schools to form the Northwestern Dental School. It was organized in 1885 and 10 years later was purchased by Northwestern University. It was in this large five-story building uh, at the intersection of Madison and Franklin in the Loop area. And you can see just above the fourth floor of the sign that says Northwestern University Dental School. It was co-ed and Northwestern assumed complete control after the uh, death of their, uh, after the death of the uh, American College uh, president. Basic science courses were now offered at the dental school instead of at the dental, instead of at the medical school. The first graduates of Northwestern University Dental School were the class of 1896. There were 121 graduates and five were female. The third school that made up Northwestern University was uh, Northwestern College of Dental Surgery. And as I said, this school had no affiliation with Northwestern University uh, before it uh, was affiliated in 1898. It was organized in 1893, and it was also near Chicago Medical College on the near south side of Chicago. It was purchased by Northwestern University in 1898, and then moved to the five-story building, which you just saw at the intersection of Franklin and Madison. There's a sign on the building, uh, uh, the corner of the building says, teeth extracted free. The dental school moved to uh, what was called the Northwestern building. This was in the old Tremont Hotel, which was in the loop at Dearborn and Lake Streets. Uh, dental law and pharmacy schools moved to this facility. The dental school occupied the upper three floors. They moved in 1902. A year later, a fire broke out on the fifth floor, destroying a lot of the equipment, including the students' microscopes, but lectures uh, resumed after a brief hiatus. This uh, location was considered ideal because it was near the loop uh, and public transportation. It was convenient to the business center. It was accessible to a population of 2 million, which ensured an abundance of clinical material. And it was equipped with all the latest conveniences, including toilets. There was an operating, operating rooms were on the top floor for lighting and ventilation. The dental school and medical schools moved into the ward building uh, for the fall session in 1926. The dental school occupied the upper uh, floors uh, 8 through 13. The building was built with a $4 million gift from Elizabeth Ward, who was the widow of Montgomery Ward. The building was designed in the collegiate Gothic style by James Gamble Rogers, who also designed Abbott Hall, Weebolt Hall, uh, Dyke Stadium, which is now Ryan Field, and the Deering Library on the North Campus. The dental school had its scientific and technical labs on the 8th, 9th, and 10th floors. Clinics were on the 11th, 12th, and 13th floors. Uh, there was an administrative office, library, and museum, which were considered world-class on the 10th floor. The tower housed a, a club, a restaurant, and offices for the university president and board of trustees. The basement and 14th floor were used for special purposes. One of the early controversies was whether medicine and dentistry should be separate professions or should be uh, joined together. Was dentistry a, just a subspecialty of medicine? Should dentists have both MDs and DADS degrees? And should dentists be autonomous? The controversy pers persisted and strangely, uh, most of the dentists at the time believed that uh, an MD and DDS degree were necessary. Edgar Swain, the first dean of the Northwestern Dental School, uh, thought that uh, dentistry should be a separate and distinct profession, but he was in a minority. Others uh, had their own opinion. Truman Brophy, who was Dean Emeritus of the Chicago College of Dental Surgery, had a DDS degree and then obtained his MD degree. He thought an MD degree should be a prerequisite for the study of dentistry. Green, Vardam, and Black, G.V. Black, who was the second dean of the Northwestern Dental School, uh, championed dentistry's autonomy, but then he insisted that dentists should study the basic sciences like physicians so that they could be competent oral physicians. Dean Charles Freeman uh, in the mid-20th century 
was the first Northwestern Dental School Dean without an M degree in over a decade. World War I came along early in the history of the dental school. Dentists were considered under contract by the armed forces and were not commissioned uh, like physicians were. And they were not eligible for a commission until three years of service. The Surgeon General designated the dental school as well recognized. So students participated in the Student Army Training Corps. They received uh, books, clothing, and a monthly stipend and participated in military drills as seen on the right. Northwestern had a quota of 12 men they had needed to send to the service uh, and they reported to Fort Sheridan uh, as assigned. The war demonstrated that dental deficiencies and dental ailments led to inefficient fighting forces. So it was anticipated that after the war was over, there would be an increased demand for dental services as people uh, uh, were concerned about their dental health. This lasted until the depression and then people started neglecting their teeth again. And uh, there, there uh, was fear that there could be an oversupply of dentists. Then World War II came along and dentists unfortunately were considered expendable. They were not automatically commissioned. Some were uh, drafted out of uh, small towns, leaving the towns with no uh, dental care. Uh, they were rarely deferred and often drafted as uh, privates or orderlies. Dental defects were one of the primary reasons, if not the primary reason, for rejecting uh, potential draftees. And there were over 400,000 potential recruits who lacked six opposing teeth. The Army took over uh, the uh, control of dental and medical schools in 1943 in order to assure an adequate supply of dentists and physicians. Books, labs, supply, uh, lab supplies, and housing were subsidized by the government. Medical and dental schools adopted a quarter system in order to accelerate the training and graduating a class every nine months. When the war was over, it was anticipated that dental care again would be an increased demand uh, because uh, the, the soldiers had been exposed to uh, uh, good dental care during the war and there would be an increased demand for their services. Pedodonics was one of the strong subspecialties at Northwestern. In 1920, more than 90% of school children had decayed teeth. And Dean Arthur Black, who was the son of G.V. Black, uh, encouraged establishing a dental clinic for children. This was established by Dr. Robotham in 1921. The uh, uh, clinic was uh, designed specifically for children with chairs, waiting room, teaching area, and playroom uh, uh, pediatric size. It was funded by the University Friends, alumni, and also Chicago philanthropist Julian Rosenwald. Now, Julius Rosenwald was a major owner of Sears Roebuck, so he uh, helped fund a clinic uh, which was later housed in the Montgomery Ward building, which I found interesting. The pedodontics program uh, included orthodontia, instruction to nutrition, and other uh, physical problems that uh, uh, children had. Children were given toothbrushes and instructions on how to use them. Usually there were about 80 to 100 children in the clinic uh, at each session. And about 40 nurses uh, were assigned uh, to scour Chicago to bring in children that needed dental care uh, in this clinic. The pedodontist program was strongly endorsed by University President Walter Dill Scott. Cleft Palate Institute uh, also uh, 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 put uh, the dental school on the uh, map. It was a subspecialty department established by uh, Dean Charles Freeman and involved three of the Northwestern schools, medical, dental, and speech. Orthodontist John Thompson uh, was initially the director and then it was taken over by uh, Dr. Tom Graber in the 1950s. <laughs> a government grant was used to study the growth pattern of face muscles and bones. Dr. Graber is seen in this photograph, second man from the right. Northwestern encouraged uh, dental care for the needy. Uh, Dean Olson in, uh, from in his 21-year uh, uh, tenure emphasized the dentist's responsibility to provide care to the indigent community. A free clinic was established on Saturday morning staffed by students and faculty in, beginning in 1970, directed by Julianne Blewett Foster. The Student Initiative Project Special Child began offering care and teaching dental hygiene and preventive care for children with special needs. And they trained some of the youngsters to assist in the care. 
uh, the students made a movie, The Silent Sufferers, about a community of intellectually disabled uh, children and the dental care they were uh, given by Northwestern. Uh, the narration was provided by one of the news anchors in Chicago, and the music was supplied by Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Attention was turned to the need for uh, dental care for the geriatric population in the 1980s, and a senior dental outreach program was established. There was mobile equipment uh, that went to several nursing homes in Chicago and Evanston. Dental chairs were modified to make the elderly comfortable and fees were based on age and income. The dental school gradually outgrew its uh, space in the ward building and a new building was needed. In 1975, Dean Olson announced plans for a new building at uh, 240 East Huron, as shown in this picture. A campaign was begun to raise $74 million for renovation of the ward building and a new health science building. It was, it was occupied in fall 1978. No federal funds or state funds were used. It was all private donations. And you can see in the picture on the right of uh, the building with uh, to the right of the building is Passivant Memorial and on the north side of the building is Wesley Memorial Hospital. The building was eight stories and uh, the dental school occupied the first three floors and part of the fourth. Uh, there were adequate facilities for uh, many students and dental hygienists. Uh, there was a lab facility, lecture rooms, conference rooms, and the facility is now the McGaw Pavilion of Northwestern Memorial Hospital. There were many famous dentists uh, uh, at Northwestern, both graduates and faculty. Perhaps the most famous was Green Vardaman, G.V. Black. Uh, he was considered the father of modern dentistry and the father of operative dentistry. He was the second dean of the dental school. He established Dentistry is a scientific uh, profession, not just a mechanical art. As a child, he was more interested in nature and wildlife and hunting and fishing than he was in school, and he only had 22 months of formal education. He studied medicine under his brother, a physician, and studied dentistry by reading the local dentist books. He sustained a severe knee injury during the Civil War and was discharged back to civilian life. He was a very real Renaissance man. He played the flute, violin, and piano. He taught himself algebra, geometry, Latin, French, and German. He was invited to lecture in France and Germany, and he spoke the native language for his lectures. It was said he did not repeat lectures, but updated them instead. He trained himself to be ambidextrous and uh, could write two letters simultaneously with uh, each hand. He may have had attention deficit disorder and is possibly had mercury poisoning due to his work with the mercury amalgams. He uh, studied many uh, aspects of dentistry, including the effect of acid and alkaline conditions on the teeth. Uh, he applied new methods of asepsis and antisepsis during dental surgery. Uh, he hypothesized that bacterial waste products caused cavities. He developed amalgams for fillings. He standardized the methods of cavity preparation and fillings and pioneered the use of nitrous oxide for analgesia. He developed the classification for dental caries, which is still in use today. He patented uh, dental drills and universal joints, but he had many other inventions, which he did not patent. And it is said that he could have been a very wealthy man when he died, if he had patented these, these other inventions. Uh, he had amazing foresight and said uh, to his trainees, the day is surely coming, and perhaps within the lifetime of you young men before me, when you will be engaged in practicing preventive rather than reparative dentistry. And this is a statue of him on the uh, uh, south side of Lincoln Park, uh, where uh, uh, North Astor intersects uh, North Avenue. He had many writings, including these titles. Uh, one source said he wrote over 1,300 papers which comes out to one about every 16 days of his career. Another uh, pioneer uh, in uh, uh, the dental profession uh, at uh, Northwestern was Julianne Blewett Foster. Uh, she opened the doors for women and minorities to practice dentistry. She grew up in segregated Washington, DC. During her school year, she studied art, uh, piano, but drama and ballet. 
She was considering veterinary school, but she did not want to leave Washington, D.C., and uh, Howard did not offer a vet school. So she went to dental school uh, after studying zoology at uh, Howard. She was inspired to be a dentist by her orthodontist uh, who corrected her teeth. She said she had a gap between her front teeth that was big enough for another tooth. She graduated from Howard in 1962. Uh, she wanted to bring dental care to patients who did not have it and said that dental care was a, uh, a right for children. After graduation, she came to Chicago where she uh, worked on, on the South Side in Project Head Start. She held many positions uh, at, the med at the dental school and also nationally. She was director of the dental hygiene department beginning in 1967. She was the first African-American full-time faculty at the dental school. She was the assistant dean of admissions uh, for several years, the associate dean, and the associate dean for student affairs until the dental school closed in 2001. She was the first woman president of the Chicago Dental Society in its 128 year history, and the first woman and first African American president of the American College of Dentists, an honorary organization for dentists. She served on several NIH advisory councils. Dr. Edward Angle was considered the father of American orthodontics. He graduated from uh, dental school in Pennsylvania. He classified various forms of malocclusion and developed tre treatments, including appliances and surgical technique. Uh, as you can see, he was both an MD and DDS, as many were in his time. <laughs> Dr. Jefferson uh, was not a faculty member, but was a graduate of the American College of Dental Surgery, uh, which was one of the predecessors of the dental school. He was the first African-American to practice dentistry in the US Army, serving in Cuba during the Spanish-American War. After the war was over, he returned to Chicago and set up an office on State Street. Dr. Frederick Noyes uh, organized the first course in dental pathology in the United States when he was a dental student. He was very talented and provided the illustrations for uh, Dr. G.V. Black's textbooks. He authored his own textbook, uh, Dental Histology and Embryology. And he was the second of uh, three generations to uh, serve on the uh, dental school faculty. Dr. Jarabek uh, uh, obtained his DDS degree from University of Michigan, uh, but uh, uh, received a master's degree and PhD in orthodontics from uh, Northwestern. He developed a Jarabek cephalometric analysis for the diagnosis uh, treatment planning in uh, orthodontics. The dental school closed in 1901, or 2001. Uh, in March uh, 1998, on uh, uh, Monday night, March 2nd, the Northwestern Board of Trustees announced plans to close the dental school. Uh, there had been some thought of closing it for several months, but uh, they abruptly announced on Monday night uh, that uh, the school would be closed. This was a surprise to many, uh, including uh, Dean Hoorer at the time, uh, Dr. Her Dean Herrer was out of town when this announcement uh, came. The last class uh, to uh, be at the uh, graduate from the dental school uh, would be entering in 1997, graduating in 2001. It was originally planned that the uh, school would close in 1999, but it was found that there was an inadequate number of slots for transfer students. Um, the Northwestern president, Henry Beenan, uh, blamed the high new capital costs budget deficits, and lagging research. The dental school was consuming one-twelfth of the university's budget. It was estimated it was costing the school $62,000 uh, to train a dental student per year. Dental students uh, uh, did not receive uh, their training in hospitals. Uh, hosp medical students did uh, receive their training in hospitals, but the hospitals were not funded by the universities, so it was more expensive to train dental students. Private schools could not compete with the public uh, state sco dental schools. For example, the University of Illinois tuition was just over $3,500 per year, whereas Loyola, a private school, was over $15,000 per year. Washington University Dental School in St. Louis closed down because they said they could not raise their tuition high enough to cover expenses and still be competitive. Some cited the declining reputation of the dental school uh, as the uh, uh, cause of uh, 
is the reason for closing the school down. But Northwestern ranked second in the nation on the national board exams. They produce 2% of dental, dental graduates annually. And six dental schools, including Emory, Washington, Loyola, Georgetown, and Oral Roberts, Roberts had closed in the past decade because they could not compete uh, with uh, public universities. On the right is uh, Dean Hurer, uh, Hur, uh, who uh, was the dean at the time the announcement was made that the school would be closing. Uh, he became professor emeritus and the school was actually closed by Dean Lee Jameson. But Northwestern Dental School's legacy continues. It was reputed to be one of the top five dental schools in the country. It trained more than 14,000 students <laughs> from all 50 states and 60 countries. Uh, it had many uh, 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 strong uh, aspects that uh, uh, continue uh, and uh, gave it its uh, fantastic reputation. Uh, it had a library and museum that were world famous. Uh, the library consisted of over 68,000 books. They created an index of periodical literature. Post, first postdoctoral degree in dentistry was offered in 1922. First uh, graduate program in pedodontics in 1935. It was one of the first graduate orthodontic programs. Uh, it found the founding of the Dental Honor Society Omicron Cap Upsilon occurred at Northwestern. The Dental Hygiene Honor Society Sigma Phi Alpha began at Northwestern, as well as the pro use of procaine mandibular anesthesia. Uh, Gardol was discovered in the 1950s as a plaque preventive. Northwestern was a leader uh, in curriculum reform and admission standards for dental schools as it was for the medical school. I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Greg Messina, one of the dental school graduates, for his assistance in putting this uh, presentation together. I hope you had a good summer and uh, look forward to getting together again virtually uh, next time when we will have a special Halloween presentation. In the meantime, uh, stay healthy and stay connected. <laughs>